Hello guys and welcome to the third and final game for the Pro Dota Cup by Smashcast TV here for the EU version of this tournament, of course sponsored by Xbet, who is our live sponsor and they offer live betting on all Pro Dota Cup matches offering the best odds and the highest payouts. So win with Xbet, use bonus code BOUNTYX to deposit and get 100 euros free. That said guys, we are in the final match between Team Singularity and Penta Esports. This is, or Penta Sports apparently, this is the Artist matchup for both teams. Everything is on the line. If they win, they get to go to the final. If they don't, they actually go down to the loser's brackets. And that will be crucial uh, for them as they'll have to get a couple extra games to be able to advance to that final again. And of course, beat those opponents with a winner's bracket advantage. That said, guys, we are now in the third game. Let's get right into the draft. But before we do so, allow me to present myself. My name is D Swordfish. I'm here with Vate Dota. And we'll be watching this final game. How are you doing, Vate? Well, I'm surprised to see Earthshaker for Pento once again, yet I am really hyped to see Owned Me on Shaker in one more game. From Side of Singularity, we see Disruptor Puck and Nyx's superior control from their side to prevent a lot of things from happening, heroes from rotating. Yet, what is interesting for me is Winter Live and First Big for Pento Sports. They want to get some kind of a lane control from their side. Yet, it's a dangerous combination of the Winter's Curse plus Echo Slam. If you will time it perfectly and get a good mm, curse, it may be something like a vacuum Echo Slam. Yeah, but a couple of seconds may actually turn this into the disaster. Night Stalker from side of a Penta also. They are getting a lot of a vision advantage from their side. That's pretty decent hero as a position 4, haven't seen him for quite a while, yet he is super strong in the very beginning in terms of rotating. Question is, who is going to be their carry? So they know that there is already revealed two supports plus Smit from side of Singularity, most likely Legion Commander in the offlane. What can possibly be the answer for Phantom? Hmm, I mean... Uh, that uh, Legion Commander, certainly a really strong pick, especially with the Disruptor to combine it. It's really, really good duels with that Legion, right? And Penta, what could the answer? They already have a really good team fight. The Winter Raven can be really useful against Legion, though, so that could be one of the things. Night Stalker, of course, to hunt the supports down. You don't really need any more lane control. Get some... Could you go mid, like, uh, Lena, perhaps, on against a... Oh, a TA, actually, against a Puck would be... Oh, no. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> a, a Lena for Blaze Mom would be okay, as long as the plays were right. No, they're going to go for Ursa first as their carry, reserving the mid as the last pick. What do you think of this Ursa? It's alright with Night Stalker. Pretty decent with Earthshaker, but doesn't have the best initiation early on. Probably just going to be left alone in lane. No way Leech Commander can contest a lane against him. Yeah, but think about this. So, from the side of a Team Singularity, to get a Disrupt to, to control him with the Glimpse and Kinetic Field, plus Nyx with the Carapace and Impale, plus Puck, who is super mobile hero, and his control actually later on in the game goes through... The BKB, I mean, the Dream Coil. And it will be pretty hard for Panda Sports to catch up to anyone from side of a Team Singularity as long as it's been properly played. But they got a surprise effect with the Earthshaker and Winter, Winter Wyvern, plus Vision Advantage with Night Stalker. Hmm, yeah, the, the Vision Advantage will give you a very, very big uh, upper hand in the team fights, especially when you are the guy. They're both teams have pretty equal team fights, right? So you reduce the vision for the puck, you can't really dream call as securely, especially with a glimpse, it can be really, really huge. And then you, of course, get a much safer Echo Slam or a much safer niche. Singularity, the final ban being a sniper, it is a very Blazemon e pick, but against a puck, well, I mean, again, I guess he would win against the Lich Commander, it wouldn't be that big a deal because you still have the Winter Wyvern to save him. I understand that ban. Penta Esports needs to ban now a carry. Against the Ursa, I think Troll Warlord just comes to mind as. Tradition, you know, you don't want that in your team. And Troll Warlord Legion Commander was also a particularly good pickup. Doesn't really suffer much against what Penta Esports has, except for the Winter Wyvern. So, yeah, why not drop the Troll? Yeah, but you can actually pick up the Troll uh, yourself uh, for Penta, in my opinion, or Super Troll. This kind of a combination is pretty neat, in my opinion, and also grants you a, a lot of a uh, physical damage chase potential with this bashes may work out pretty sweet yet it feels like the um, the only magical damage uh so far probably the reliable one is the echo slam so the earth shaker all in all but he will actually hit quite hard with the enchant totem plus splinter blast maybe time to get some magical damage from your side also 
some heroes like Queen of Pain don't seem that good for me. And in the end, you're playing against his drop to puck, Nyx Assassin plus Legion Commander, and that's a pain. That's a pain for any kind of intelligence mid lane hero, especially someone like Lina and Quop. So the choice is quite limited for Penta, and it feels like Troll may be the choice. Ooh, but instead, Viper. they're going for Viper. What a nasty pick from Penta. I don't think I don't think Penta was going to go for Troll. I thought it was Singularity. That Viper is an interesting pick. Uh, really, really dominating the lanes. I mean, it does go well with the Winter Wyvern. Makes sense. You can really gank that mid lane. Viper does not suffer at all against the Puck. Actually, one of the better heroes against the Puck in the mid lane. And there's little Puck can do, even in terms of skill, to be able to match the Viper. Only thing is, let's hope the Viper plays well, right? It's, it's a hard hero to play nowadays. Not particularly the most common pickup. And we'll have to wait till that minute four, probably, to get the nice Stalker to gank him in the mid lane to get th those proper kills. However, the Viper can be very powerful. And now the Troll Warlord pick even becomes better because it's particularly good against Viper as he stuns him out and just kind of gets, gets him out of the team fight for quite a while. Still bursts him down, low armor. So I, I, I'd still go for Troll for Team Singularity. But there are there are other options, right? You can still go for Juggernaut, pretty good against the Ursa himself, uh, even though Winter Wyvern kind of crushes him. You could run the Gyrocopter again because the mix damage is decent against Winter Wyvern, but seems a bit of a risky pick. What else can we see? Penta, they already got Winter Wyvern, so Troll uh, may suffer from the fact of the wow, no. Hold Embrace that instead they're going for Slug. Long fights, kiting Ursa, kiting Viper, not getting that much of a damage uh, from oh, the poison from Blazemon. It seems like a very decent choice for me. I mean, they got a very good setup for Slug to get... A lot of a stolen stats. Yeah, they got Spock with the Dream Coil. Into that, they got a Static Storm plus Kinetic Field. A lot of a lockdown, and it will be pretty hard for Bento to catch up to Slug. It doesn't have that much of a reliable lockdown. They got Fisher. Yeah, but if Slug got a vision on them, he most likely will be able to dispel it in time. Same goes for the uh, Invi uh, with the Silence on Night Stalker. Yeah, but it, it's since all the spells here for. The only, the only concern here is that they have a lot of spells or a lot of stuns that are kind of targeted against Slark. Or not, not against Slark, but targeted in general. So they're not hard to land. The Fissure being the only one that's hard to land. So if you Dark Pact, they can actually wait for your Dark Pact to stop and they can just stun you regardless in the middle of the team fight. Shouldn't be too hard to do that. And you still have a zero cast point stun in the in the Echo Slam, which is also very useful if you catch him by surprise, right? On top of the fact that you have an Ursa which can burst you down the second they catch you. And, of course, you can't dispel that Winter's Curse from you. Um, so that would be another great skill. I, I think the Slark pick, I think there's better picks um, than the Slark. It's going to be, it's good against the Viper in general. And I see that, but the rest of the pickups from Penta might really crush him. The mixed damage bag, though, is really useful against the Winter Wyvern. And it's all really going to depend on the lanes go well for him, right? You do have the Disruptor and Nyx Assassin to secure you a nice lane and ensure that like, you can get a Midas into a Shadow Blade quickly. And also, there is going to be an Ursa on the bottom lane against Legion Commander. So, most likely, both Winter Wyvern and Nice Sucker will have plenty of fun and time to run around. Oh. And I actually got distracted by the cosmetics on Winter Wyvern, this boogie. Looks like an exotic fish. <laughs> oh, alright. That's good. Uh, do you think they're gonna go for... Dual lane on the top lane with the... No, I was gonna say invasion. Like, they seem to yeah, really want to get a kill early. And, oh yeah. no, okay, so you're gonna be destroyed. I love that immortal, by the way. Oh, that's so cool. Great impale, by the way. Great impale! I might have just saved his life. Wow. And that actually did, and there is an aggressive trailing from Benta. Lisa, meanwhile, tries to cut the angle, running away from Skeeter. Question is, will he be able to run away? Most likely he will. There is no mana on Night Stalker, and no void to shut them down. Most likely, a Slug will love to dodge this aggressive trailing from Sarah Penta, and he's already rotating to the bottom. Seems like a really clever idea. You're running against a nice stalker and against an Ursa, like you said. But this aggressive dual lane, more than anything. It seems like they're even rotating the Winter Wyvern, but you really can't fight against that. And now that they saw Blazemon going for the poison attack level 1, they can put a lot of pressure into him in the middle lane so he can't grab that Curls of Skin. It's not the most common build, actually, really uncommon to go Curls of Skin level 1, but if you are suffering a lot of aggression in the mid game, you might opt for that, or in the mid lane. However, for now, Blazemon's going to be quite weak against the Puck. Not going to be able to win this gate lane until he gets level 3, most likely. And that's when he starts dominating. In the bottom there lane, was an amazing, amazing fissure. Just took a look. take a look at this. That such a great fissure by the Omni. Meanwhile, they're trading hits with Exotic Deer. 
Oh no, Exotic Deer only went for the Essence Shift. That's... They can't really finalize him, but like you said, that was a fantastic vision. Right there, stopping him here. He couldn't really... Well, actually, you can see him more closed down. And stopping him with the trees. You, the best part about it is you can't cut this down, right? There's no trees you can cut down trying to escape that. So it was the perfect fissure. And they got a, a first blood early for Penta. Really good start. Yeah. They are leaving Skitter on top of lawn against Patos. Uh, question is how well Patos will do oh, on this wow. lane. Wow. And not this zone out. Look at that. Like, you just stop him from getting to the rune. You can get TNZ to get a lot of harassment. These fishes have been on point. I'm pretty sure they just need to pick on me and Earthshaker every single match. And that's it. You know, don't pick him any other hero. <laughs> He's just good with it. Reminds me of Fogged, actually. <clears throat> when he used to, when Earthshaker used to play support. Fogged. Oh my god. That Earthshaker must... Maybe the best Earthshaker in the world in his name in his uh, time. And those fishes are exactly the same. Very, very good positioning. <laughs> Got some kind of a deja vu feeling. And... Well. That's good. That's good that you see... Some kind of a pros getting back on the scene, even as a incarnation of other players. Yeah, I guess oh. Bog still analyzes. He's not dead or anything, you know. <laughs> There's no need to reincarnate <laughs> the poor man. But anyway, bottom lane, Boogie has going to use the Golden Braids, going to heal up. And on me, still wanted to kill Exotic Deer. Uh, this Fissure, still pretty good, but not good enough to actually stop him. In fact, Boogie is going to try to fight. The Impale finishes him off. A really good Impale by Kaysor. And they're going to try to kill Owned Me as well with the Mana Burn. Dropping him down. Meanwhile, DNZ is committing to the skill on the lines that she has enough tank to survive this, theoretically, but a lot of DR already leveled up pounds, and DNZ could be in a world of hurt. Uh, as they go on to him, they still have the impale. There it is, the first stun. Fissure to stop him, but the pounds already caught him, and DNZ is lashed to the floor. Can they finish him off? Ooh, the Winter Wyvern saving his life with a cold embrace and ensures that DNZ will survive to see the other day, and now they're going on to Kaysor. The objective is the next assassin, but they're done with these fights. They don't have enough mana anymore to sustain this constant fighting. It feels like um, lane from Center of Penta got a little bit more of advantage in having this cold embrace uh, from Boogie, which grants them a bit of a sustain. But from the side of uh, Singularity, they get an essence shift on Slug plus a lot of mobility. Mm -hmm. Maybe oh. quite tough. I mean, I think what was really interesting is that Winter Wyvern usually does not skill uh, the yeah. the cold embrace so early. And in this case, Lady decided to do it just for the extra heal, and it's been working fantastically. Probably gonna... I wouldn't even be surprised if he maxed Arctic Burn just for the laning phase. And then even skipped Splinter Blast to some degree early on. And of course, kept Cold Embrace at level 1, because this will need to max it. And then uh, max Splinter Blast. Really, Boogie likes playing these supports like Io and... And we saw him in 4 Anchors with Sea Captain. He likes playing these defensive supports to some degree. He used to play Tusk a lot, and now he's gone for these healers. And he plays full heal, almost like he's playing Heroes of the Storm or something. And it's working nicely for his team, as they already have really strong laners with a lot of damage regardless. Yep. And finally, it's me at 4. It's Knight, level 2 on Knight. So probably not enough, especially with no Crippling Fear on him to kill Puck. But instead, they're going for the bottom lane. We see another great cold embrace. Look at that. Own me is completely healed up. They do have damage, but again, they don't have the sustained uh, th stuns. They have to use the chain stuns really early, and then even though the damage is kind of high, they don't have enough magical damage on the Slark and the Disruptor to actually finish him off. And now it's nighttime. It's time for DNZ to start hunting some supports. But you know about this cold embrace, there are two sides of a coin. You're playing against Slark in the end, and it's the same as for Abaddon, it feels like, uh, because he keeps on hitting you, stacking up his stats, oh. and... Fisher and the disruptor most likely he will go down and a kill for boogie yeah you're right actually cold embrace as the game progresses i think it probably starts becoming a much much weaker spell against the slark because in the middle of a team fight cold embracing a team fight just give a teammate just gives slark free reign to just get a bunch of essence shift stacks and they try to counter initiate with a cold embrace right or on a cold embrace teammates they're gonna have to counter initiate onto a slark that has like you know 30 agility extra which is ridiculous so, it is true, that's a good point, that's why a level so early makes use of the skill when it's useful now, because the Slark Essence Ship right now only lasts 15 seconds, and yeah, sure, it's it's okay to get the extra agility, but it's not going to make you into that insane butterfly user for free kind of Slark that you expect. Yep. Here comes the Shrine users from side of a Penta, they are healing up DNZ, already up with the Silence, and Nisha may go down here. Mm, they use the silence on them, like you mentioned. The Viper Strike as well. How do you prevent that? You can't. There's too much damage. Has to use the phase shift. Ooh, we'll try with the Illusory Orb. Uh, the Viper Strike is finally finished, and they can't commit to the skill in the end. It's going to be a wasted Viper Strike and also a lot of damage from DMZ. They are not going to lose their stun because Nice Talker can't TP in time. They have a Glimpse ready and Impale as well. Goodbye, DMZ. We'll sacrifice his life for a great counter initiation by Singularity, punishing the Night Stalker for going so far. 
Yeah, it feels like with the level 3 Night Stalker, they don't have that much of a time. Plus, minute 5 is... Well, there, you already know that there are shrines up, and though, Blazeman spit it in the face of Nisha plenty of times to drop him almost to 100 HP. Yet, Invis on the bottom lane in 36 seconds to the Dream Coil. Maybe some kind of a decent setup for a kill. Hmm. We'll see. I mean, he does, with the Invis, like you said, 20 seconds to Dream Coil, he can wait, waning Rift even to begin with, in instead of Dream Coiling, and then boom. The only issue is that waning Rift is only level 1. The stun or the silence is not long enough to actually stop the Earthshaker from counter-initiating you. And the top lane, they're actually going to kill Patos with just initiation. They see Puck leave the middle lane, they know the supports are not there anymore, so Skitter takes advantage of this and goes onto the Ninja Commander and punishes her for that. Yep. Yet oh. on the bottom lane, Penta is still lane. quite scared. Oh, placement. Oh, the body block, the silence, there's Dream Coil, all is going to be committed. No, they don't want to fight against the Viper. He actually maxed Corrosive Skin. So, yeah, there's no way you can kill him. That's, I haven't seen this build in so long. This is the build that you used to play when uh, Viper used to go Mech Viper. Remember? Like that. That's, that's how old it is. <laughs> Viper actually built mech. As old as the dinosaurs, it feels like. <laughs> okay, maybe that's excessive, but... <laughs> yeah, I see. I see what you mean there. Uh, the, that, that Viper is going for a very defensive build, and actually, we're going to compare it to the yesterday's game. But, oh, Glimpse, wait. First, Winter Warren going to die. Kevin Field, Pounds, Boogie. Yeah, going down. Oh, no, not maybe with the Cold Embrace, trying to survive here. They're stealing a lot of stats regardless. Boogie, use the Magic Stick. He wants to survive this, but won't be able to as DNC is not going to fight against three. Owned me, coming in with a Fissure, stunning one of them, and getting double kill in the end. A counter kill thanks to Blaze Mon's rotation. Yep. Good rotation from side of a Penta. Exotic here feels like suffering on the late on lane considerably. He's only level four. And Oshak actually gets his level 5 uh, very soon, and the main carry for Panta is dominating top lane quite hard. He's already at level 7, finished his face boots, and there is a rotation from Singularity to punish the bear. Mm, can they do it? You think they will be able to have only level 1 glimpse? Is that enough? Oh, oh. there are 4 man rotation. I mean, what is... Okay, Skitter is, is actually going on his own rotation. He's like, I can kill Legion. Why Why should I be scared? He doesn't know there's a smoke coming in. And he, Oh, he sees the Nyx Assassin. Realizes there's a rotation coming in. Dream Call instead. Find the Winter Wyvern. Skitter, don't go help your teammate, please. Just stay in the trees. They see him now. The Impale will catch him. And the Glimpse will bring him back. The duel comes out. Winter Wyvern will lose her life. And now owned me. Stops the Legion Commander from moving any further. Another great fissure. Patos will take a different path. But that path will only lead to his own death. As the Earthshaker chases him with Enchant Toad. And Patos in the trees. Actually hits him with the overwhelming odds. And is still running away. He doesn't have a TP. Patos, what are you doing? What is your plan? They're going to find him eventually. And Toad him to the face. will finish him off. As Skitter in the back line, trying to find against the puck, but he doesn't have enough damage to finish him off before he loses or himself away. That was a, a, good, <laughs> a, a good good play by uh, the Earthshaker. And in the end, I think dual damage for your own life is okay in the early game. I guess at least something, especially when you're a Legion Commander who didn't get that much on his lane, and they end your thing uh, against Ursa plus letter rotation from Night Stalker. You need to be happy with life, actually. Gives you and not complain. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I mean, you did get a kill on the Winter Iron, which is not too important, but you it was the with the Legion duel, so all right, 10 damage, I guess. You died for 10 damage, you could have done worse. And you also put a lot of pressure into the Ursa early on. And if you look at the net worth, we see that the Ursa is leading, of course, but he's not too far off the puck himself. The only issue is that the Slark has been kind of harassed in his lane, and Blaze Mon is starting to get a domination with the Viper that you expect now that he has enough levels. And what's the build for the Viper this game, actually? We always talk about this. Dragonlance, staple item, almost always built on Viper. But what besides that, what do you go for? Uh, Heaven's Halberd. You think or so? Or BKB, yeah. Heaven's Halberd, something like this. Yeah, actually, why not? Uh, you may go for some kind of a Sanjin Yasho also, I guess. But I think that Halberd is pretty good when you're playing against uh, Legion Commander with Slock. Gives you a little bit more tankiness from your side. Actually, um, hmm. If to think about this, there also may be some kind of a Shadow Blade or a Silver Edge later on. Maybe you want to annoy Disruptor. And, hmm. There's actually so many possible builds on the Viper with the Maelstrom. But yeah. I don't know, though, if it's still a thing with the Agadims, though. Yeah, I haven't seen that in a really long time, actually. The Agadims. I, I mean, 
Yeah, actually, interesting. Uh, we haven't seen that build in a while. Usually, Vipers now go for more physical damage. Ever since the poison attack change, they kind of favor that physical damage because you can obviously get all effects on the Viper. You could potentially also see it. Uh, uh, some people theorized them um, with Titanic build early on, or with like a uh, Helm of the. Not Helm, sorry. They, <laughs> they Morden Mask to get the extra lifesteal and then try to go for even a Desolator, for example, to get the, a lot of healing with your natural tankiness. But anyway, the Dragon Lance, of course, and then Hurricane Pie probably next, and then we'll see afterwards. That orb effect, by the way, is so cool. It's got a that immortal is amazing. I think God Viper got a head helmet finally. Is that what he needs, you know? Now he has extra extra protection for his little head. Now he's safe everywhere. <laughs> well, at least some kind of an item for Viper. Waiting for items for Jakiro. Yay! <laughs> oh, filthy Jakiro picker. No, <laughs> I don't think that's a thing. Yeah, I agree. I want an item for both heads, which can kind of unites them into one and makes him a proper a proper Gemini twin. Anyway. There are no new items, it feels like. Uh, so far, no blink daggers up yet. Orsi is fairly close to it, and the question is how he will utilize this item. Uh, will he keep on farming on the lane until he'll get his blood or something else? Or he will actually try to rotate somewhere. He got a TP, uses the overpower, and he's actually hiding from the lane. Uh, time for a smoke and. Who is going to be the target? Probably Disruptor is an easy one, though look at the puck. Look at the puck with the investor and he's running around in the enemy jungle. <laughs> I, I love the way uh, Owned Me actually realizes that something is shady here. I don't like what's going on. So he cuts his way <laughs> for the forest in the corner of the map. Yeah, it's true. And I mean, what, what they're doing right now, which is, is clever, is a tower trade of... For not a useless tower as much, but the offlane tower for Radiant certainly their weakest tower, or their least useful. For a mid-tier one, so items are being really beneficial for Penta. And meanwhile, you still have the Earthshaker in case he wants to defend this, and with a Fissure, you might be able to do so. However, now you might trade Own Me. He's a bit too close. And it comes to Viper. They want to fight this. Seems like this is the plan all along, and the TP from the Ursa in a bad position. The Glimpse bringing in back is like, no! But he can't do anything to stop it. DNZ will stop Elijah's TP, and that means that Elijah cannot go home today as Boogie comes in. Already takes the ward down. That's the first objective. The kinetic field will stop this Night Stalker for a bit, but he's committing to the skill. He still has the urn. No, doesn't have enough urn charges. The slow is gone. Elizash, come on. He still has enough healing. The duel to stop him from attacking Elizash. In fact, Night Stalker will not be able to kill Pato. Oh, yeah, they will. Yeah, they will. He, he can actually sacrifice himself for his support by using a duel. It's a too long a stun and got way too cocky there. As a result, losing his own life. And oh, is really, DNZ is committing. Okay, yeah, that's a good choice. Don't go in that far. That's a bit too much. It's only a support after all. And the Dream Cold to punish him. Misha says, if you kill my Legion, I kill you. And he'll be able to do so. And silence DNZ. He still has the Urn Chargers, though, to heal up. And in the end, without the blink on the puck, they can't have the mobility necessary to kill off this nice Stalker. It doesn't feel like they wanted to commit that much because they know that everybody from side of a Panther are already on your top lane. And in the end, they are losing uh, heroes, not getting a duel. Oh, 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 they well, found him. What a play by Nisha. He actually went, grabbed the haste, and went around the whole map just to find this Night Stalker. <laughs> He's committed. Was a good play. Question is, will, be, will they be able to punish Penta on the top lane? Probably not. In fact, Nisha might get punished. She's... Oh, no, no, he should be fine. In fact, uh, it seems like Asor himself is giving a bit of vision, see if they can actually initiate. It's a bit hard. Right now, there's a TP going to come up as well, and I think they do come with us. Yep. You can almost see Kaiser. It's Skitter What's has a Blink Dagger is... too, by the way. Yeah, and there is um, no mana on Skitter though. He got his clarity, but fighting with completely no mana on Orsi is not the best idea. Bears don't need mana, says Skitter, but uh, they do, turns out. Because you need to use your <laughs> overpower, otherwise you're screwed. And uh, Singularity, I mean, they don't lose Nisha there. They might be able to take, a, take another tower trade, perhaps. And by the way, Viper seems to be going for the Manta style build in the end. Hmm. Well, there is already a silence from Puck, plus additional stats, pretty neat. Mm -hmm. Then and, and the extra moment speed is always useful on Viper. Yeah. It's a bit better than Sanji and Yasha in the sense that you don't need the maim too much. Of course, the pushing power as well is also. Oh, Lisa. <laughs> That's the sad part when you're playing as a support against someone like this angry Skitter Bear. He actually came on chasing Kaysor, yet he got his Vendetta, so that's a bait. 
Yeah, they're gonna try to kill the Ursa. He's been stunned out. Dreamcoil even committed to this and owned me. Fighting against three, maybe not the best of targets as he's been silenced and they can finish him off. Pounce <laughs> misses by like a mile, but owned me will still go down to Puck's damage. That was just a pounce to show off more than anything. And, oh. yep. A couple of more additional seconds for Earthshake and that would have been a kill. He got a cooldown on the Echo Slam, like eight seconds, but with this Echo Slam on Freeman there, uh, could have been a very beautiful turn of events. What is interesting for Viper, uh, that probably actually really like Sanjin Yashi in some regard, because later on you can turn it into two utility items, so you can build awesome. a yeah, Manta style plus uh, Halbert. Yeah, pretty nice. Neat, I think. Yeah, I agree. Actually, that's that's a good point. Viper's pretty much the only here that I can imagine being able to use both items efficiently. So, oh, Static Storm onto Viper. They can still finish it off. Duel is committed. Yeah, they will. They want to make sure that duel lasts for the maximum time possible, and they do get that kill onto the Viper. Fight advantage now for the Singularity team. And 8-8 eight, eight is the score. These teams are very equal. We expected this going to a third game. We said that the teams would probably look it out till the end, and it is exactly happening. I mean, they're they're pretty much at the same level of uh, skill, which is good to watch. But look at this Bunt actually still committing for the Roche kill, even though they don't have their Viper. But they know there is no Static Storm, there is no Duel, but there is an Angry Puck. Oh, there's the Fissure onto the Nyx Assassin. He's been silenced. Poor Nyx. Oh, okay, so he uses the... Oh, the Impale pauses by Carpus. Actually, we'll get back at this. They actually also kill the Ursa in the background. And the Boogie will survive this, but only will not have the same luck as the Shadow Dance is committed to this. And game able to kill the Ursa. They won't miss this pounce and a glimpse to ensure that this dragon becomes an extinct species once again. SNG get four kills. Only surviving member here is the Viper and... Who just know. respawns. Exactly. Recently, <laughs> uh, well, probably they shouldn't have stayed and committed that much for the Roche. You know that there are no your one of the main damage dealers actually Viper it does surprisingly much. Actually building Sanjin Yasha in the end. And here comes the ages for whom? For Exotic Deer. Two lives on Slug plus Shadow Blade and Echo Saber later on. Finally, advantage for Singularity, only 2k gold, but still quite considerably, even though, if you think about it, Penta really rely on some kind of an early snowball, yeah, with this uh, Ursa and Viper, and later in the game, actually late game, I favor Singularity much more, so Penta needs to come up some, with some kind of a decision how to turn this game in their favor. Yeah, they do. They need to try maybe getting a, a smoke gank, perhaps, trying to utilize the Viper's ability to it right now. Because you are reaching the peak for Viper, and soon the Slark will start really, really destroying you. Especially if the Slark, after the Echo Saber decides to go for Silver Edge, you're going to have a tough time. Especially fighting with either Ursa or Viper, both get destroyed by that Silver Edge. Because, of the, first of all, the burst damage taken away, you know, by 50% reduction. And second of all, those passes by Viper make him a really vulnerable hero. Uh, even with the Sun and Yasha giving him a lot of stats in the mid lane, we see the Slark, or sorry, the Ursa being ganked down and destroyed by Singularity. Again, a bit more advantage for this team as they start to snowball slightly. Well, there is a lot of vision from that of Singularity with this Vendetta Nyx Assassin, and they're preparing, uh, preparing the grounds on the bottom lane. Oh, Blaze Mon onto Exotic Deer, careful, the Impale comes in, Static Storm, oh, the Viper has been silenced for far too long, and actually finish him off first, the duel even catches a Winter Wyvern, but the Winter Wyvern is not gonna die just yet, Pathos going on to him, oh, that Winter's Curse ensures that Pathos will die to the double damage, Puck, yeah, Old Me even comes in with the Enchant Totem ensuring the kill, but now he's fighting against Exotic Deer and Nisha, and Exotic Deer stolen 11 stacks of stats, that's a free butterfly, and there's no way the Surge Shaker can survive this, maybe he can get the kill, and we will with the Enchant Totem, however, that's only an age just lost for an exchange for of course an earth shaker and exotic deer wants to continue firing this the earth is still alive but dnz might be susceptible to a large pounce and goes skitter killing the puck he's been silenced they might be able to do so but dnz already destroyed and the glimpse saves a puck's life as skitter is forced to retreat back to his own base great fight for singularity even though they lost their ages it was a very worthy trade and the most unfortunate part there was the static storm on the Earthshaker who just jumped in and probably miscalculated the range of a blink a bit but jumped into the silence, didn't manage to use his Echo Slam. Well, great place, great place by Lisa once again. 
I guess it, it, it is actually his second uh, game on a Disruptor, yeah, in this in this series. He's playing yeah, he's... super well. That, that's actually surprising how useful Disruptor is, even though mostly you rely on the on Glimpse and sometimes on the Static Storm. He's mm -hmm. doing surprisingly much. Glimpse is a ridiculous spell, though. So is Static Storm. The cast point, especially for a spell, is so useful. Glimpse is a pretty long cast point, but Static Storm is not instant, so it's it's not essentially very it's great. I mean, there's a, there's a reason why this is so favored, especially in the European and CIS scene. It's huge. People love this hero. And it's not only because Solo plays him literally every game he can, and he's one of the best disruptors in the world. They just like it a lot. Very effective for their playstyle as well. And oh, and they go on the back cleanse, the exotic tier. Harassed by Skitter. We'll survive this, though. Shadow Dance. We'll ensure that he can't make can make it out of this alive. There's the Shrine, Exotic Deer curing himself up. Oh, the duel finds the Winter Wyvern destroyed already. Static Storm prevent the initiation from the Ursa, and he's been silenced. Perfect Static Storm there for a zone out spell. And Penta will not be able to continue this and get no counter kills as Exotic Deer from behind, still looking for those supports. Winter Wyvern is forced to buy back, even. Well, not really forced to buy back, he just decided to. What's well, actually very cool uh, when you're playing against an Ursa uh, as a disruptor that we see this kind of a. Angry Bear preparing for the fight using overpower, blinking in, bam, getting glimpsed back, glimpsed back. What can you really do against that plus a static storm on top? Well, you're gonna kill Buck, I guess? Oh no, look at this! There is no damage from side of a Penta once again because Ursa is being glimpsed back. Yeah, that that was... I mean, they still lose the tower, but in exchange, Exotic Deer takes the tower and on bottom, so it ends up being an okay engagement for the guys at, at Singularity, and if they do... If the guys from Penta overstep the boundaries, they can still be punished by Kaysor and his Impale. We'll see. They see him with the sentry, though. Ooh, Kaysor uses the Ice Pack in time. There's the Impale. And they silence him. He's going to be dead for sure, but they go on to the Night Stalker. Oh, that's good. They use uh, the uh, usage of... Going to Ivan's heal, and we'll save him for now. Patos himself doesn't have blade mail, so he can't attack the Ursa really safely. Patos will go down, and Puck from behind has already been silenced. You'll set to dispel that. Can he survive this? Not with the Winter Scourge preparing this, and they have more stuns ready for him as they start piling on those Furious Swipes. They'll just destroy him in time. That's three dead for Singularity. Fought a bit too far out of their base. Well, Lenka Striker goes for the D and Z, and God bless that it's not Ursa. That really works in favor for Penta, they managed to get three kills, but meanwhile, Exotic Deer took a tier two on the bottom and tier one on top. Got a lot of gold and solo experience for himself. Well, time to think about how you're going to defend high ground. Though, Penta are not the best in terms of getting tower hits. And look at this glimpse once again destroying Skitter on the back lines. Yeah, and Bogey himself starting to TP away. That was the way to stop it. They even committed a vendetta to this, but they weren't. And that wasn't enough damage. In the end, they prevent the tier 3 because of Ursa going a bit too far in. That was just a slight mistake there by Penta. They could have taken maybe a tower, but... Sadly, they only have sustained push, not really a consistent uh, fast push by this team. We see Viper as well going for the BKB instead of the Sanjin Yasha in the end. Because he does need the BKB. Yeah, there's plenty of control from side of a Singularity. Silences, glimpses, and many other annoying things which are actually zoning out of Viper from the fight uh, all the time with the kinetic field and not that much what he can do. Ursa at least got a blink dagger to jump over but Blazeman is looking sadly from another part of a cage. <laughs> Let me in friends, I want to fight too. Well at least he will get his BKB fairly soon but there is a smoke from Singularity, they got a static storm. Actually no, there is on a cooldown yet they are warding up, preparing grounds for taking the last tower. The objective is to go on to this Viper, I think, for now. Silver Edge is not yet... Oh, yeah, it is available, so the break comes in, the duel as well, and Viper has no defensive mechanisms to survive this, but, yeah, he won't survive the duel in the end. That's a win for Patos, 48 damage, but the Nyx Assassin a bit too far in. They're not even going to be able to save him with the Glimpse. Exotic Deer doesn't want to go in onto 4 either, and with the Nyx Assassin dead, Puck seems to want to kill the Ursa. Okay, yeah, Puck, good at Lozary Orb, just playing around with the enemy team. In the end, so Viper for a Nyx, still favorable trade for Singularity, but it could be turned around if Penta want to fight this again. That was a pretty neat play by Nisha because he knew that uh, they will have to group up around Viper, so they'll be able to kill him fairly fast. Also, they got uh, melee heroes, they got a Nyx, they got a Legion Commander plus Slug who really needs to group up, but uh, he actually jumped uh, right onto the Omni, so he wasn't able to use the Echo Slam, but it feels like Lisa's gone too far here. 
Oh, careful, DNZ. Oh, good winter squares to do, stop the disruptor from going away. Meanwhile, the duel in the backlines to get. Oh, actually, no, they kill Skitter in the end. And yeah, there's a nice stalker in silence. There goes some coming into the Slark. The Slark has no way to survive this because they have too much area damage. That Shadow Dance doesn't heal him in time. And the Puck himself blinks away. Will Nisha make it out of here alive? They don't have any way to save him in the end. Penta Esports to divide the team fight again. And dividing is conquering as they kill the Slark, which is the most pesky hero on the enemy team. That's actually a first oh, kill. Wow. What a great slot. fissure. Oh lord, what a fissure! Wow! Wow! Last Amazing guess, but they owned me. By the, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, he, they, he got an, a lucky Invis rune and everything, and he's just like, nah, luck has nothing to do with this game. This is a game of skill. So fissure him and just doesn't let him go anywhere. Good stuff. And even without our sub actually taking the Roche with Cheese and Aegis, that's what they need. Hopefully they will finish BKB soon on Viper and probably BKB also on Ursa, but he's pretty far from getting this item. Unfortunate times for Penta, but at least a little bit of uh, gold for them and sustain. Feels like all they are lacking is one lucky Echo Slam. Not actually a lucky. I can't, I can't say that on me is all depending on luck. This guy knows what he is doing, but Nisha, she's not letting this Earthshaker to have his fun in the game. Plenty of control over him. So just one good Echo Slam from side of a Penta and fight is in their favor. Yeah, it could be. I mean, Penta is really close to just equaling this game. However, the late game still would be dubious for them, right? Because the Viper, the utility has, even the Ursa to some degree against the Slark should not be that high. Uh, whereas the Puck and the Slark do scale pretty decently into the late, especially now that Slark can not start going for more expensive items like Scotty or instead a Butterfly, which is his choice. Meanwhile, bottom lane though, Nyx. Okay. Try to TP, put the Fissure by Odin B. Another great. I don't know if you saw him go into the trees or something, he just guessed it, but that was a good Fissure anyway. And that's a kill onto the next assassin. And old me still owning the enemy team. Well, meanwhile, they're already on the top lane. Skitter pulling out exotic tier and actually regrets this immediately. Aegis is oh, oh, was that a pocket? What a yeah? bait. That was a really good bait. I mean, they lost an Aegis, but for a puck, it's kind of worth it if you're losing. And Patos might even lose his life as well. Glimpse will not stop Skitter as... Well, it will stop him. Because he don't actually doesn't have enough damage to finish off the Legion Commander in time. In the end, they will save Legion. DNZ wants to fly, but can't because he's on cooldown. Can't get the Void to finish off the Legion. Oh, Brilliant no. players by Panther, though. <laughs> Look at on me again. The same play as before. This time, he's returning it to them. And he's going to kill the Disruptor. Solo kill by Onmi again. Without committing Echo Slam, actually. That's a lot of damage from the Earthshaker. Well, now they got only Cheese from their side. Buyback forced from the Disruptor. That's good. Are uh, you really scared of a Disruptor? Do you really want to back off now? Yeah, no, not really. I think you can, you can fight this, no? I mean, you, if you kill him again, then it's, it's not GG, but you lost your team fight potential in the Static Storm. The whole idea is kill him before the Static Storm comes out. And they already find him with Fissure. Oh, in goes over. That's it. That's exactly what they wanted for the duel. Onto the Viper. Maybe not the best choice. As the Winter Weapon comes in and saves his life. Patos is turned into a pig. No, I did not see that. He just got stunned out. Exotic Deer went a bit too far. They still want to kill him. Do they have enough area damage? The Impale catches both of them so they can't keep hitting this poor Slark. As Nisha with a drink call onto three. He hasn't died of Skitter's damage, but everyone in Pent is still surviving. The BKB already activated onto this Viper. And the healing starts by this uh, Winter Wyvern. And they go onto Viper. Oh no, the Nyx Assassin destroyed by a Great Winter's Curse. And in the end, they're gonna decide to go for the towers. Finally, the objective game is the important part. The Heaven's Halber stops the Ursa from attacking these buildings. But the Viper's still committing to them. He will get the, the melee racks, and now it's time to retreat. They forced the Viper and Disruptor, they punished it, and now Nyx Assassin also died. And they get another kill, Exotic Deer, going a bit too far, they do see him, and he should have known this, he's been stunned for too long, that pressed attack will not save him, and he's gonna go down, the Ursa sacrificing his life though, as the Static Storm sticks him in a bad position, Blaze Mode in the Black Lines wants to kill the Sutter yet again, but he won't get that kill just yet, DNZ, oh, the Splinter Blast finishes him off, and DNZ still going onto this Legion Commander, she's been stunned for too long, the Silence ensures there's no press the attack, and he will go down, Nisha just trying to gain some time for his team, but the guys at Penta decide, let's go for the Rax, I mean, we can go for another lane, perhaps, and it's time to go for the top lane as Blaze Mon is still full health because he ate his cheese somewhere in that team fight, allowing him to continue this pushover. Just Boogie oh, grants so much sustain for his teammates with this mm. cold embrace is granting 
a lot of region on the side of Atlanta and Singularity who already used their shrines there can't really contest with this and now time for shrines to fall and finally 4k gold advantage for Panther. Well, uh, that, that uh, Benta, like we said, they got a couple good, not really a good Echo Slime, but just a couple good team fights, and they made yep. it back into the game completely. And now, let's see if Boogie's the target. In case will come in, and Vendetta, the Impale, the Silence, they find this Winter Wyvern, and that's going to be an important kill, as this Winter has been having a lot of effect this game. And since he has so many levels, it's actually 60 seconds that Winter Wyvern. Yeah, plus they will devote this Observer, which was placed by Boogie, I guess? So, well, all the extra yeah, will was, be I think so. I don't think they yeah. necessarily saw it because you don't really expect the Winter Wyvern to be placing a ward while he's dying necessarily. Unless they were looking at his inventory. I don't know yeah. if they were necessarily. Uh, would you be too concerned about that? They might just leave it. An exotic deer though. It's going to go down in the bottom lane. He can't use a Shadow Dance because of the silence. And another great fissure force him to take the wrong path. Another kill into the Slark. Oh. Banta finally snowballing with their lineup probably uh, much later, much more later than we expected, 32 minutes in the game. But finally, they got their BKBs on Skitter and BKB on Blazeman. Mm -hmm. And now in the oh. mid lane, another owned me initiation. Oh, Fissure, you won't get it. Yo Scepter is going to be used on the Puck, so he can actually initiate this. That Courier will die, but he didn't have any items. I don't know what he gave it to the Puck right now. I think it was the plate mail, maybe? Regardless, yeah. that's unfortunate loss of the courier for nothing. Yeah. And I guess Owned Me was just scared that there's someone behind this puck because he got a possibility to use the Fisher to the use of, to the use of them, I guess. Yeah, he could have. Yeah, that's true. Uh, he just... He chose not to. Yeah. He didn't know who is behind. So, why yeah. commit and lose your life if you can play a bit more safe? Actually, they are going for a kill on a case or on top lane. We'll see if uh, the guys from Singularity are able to get this back into the game, or they're going to keep people losing people left and right. If this kill onto the Nyx, owned oh. me, has no trouble getting these solo kills, and this is a problem. It's too late into the game to be letting this Earthshaker destroy your team. He's the offlaner for the enemy team, but again, owned me, constantly destabilizing these team fights by becoming a four versus five engagement all the time. The amount of things which <laughs> Shaker is actually winning the game for Penta once again. When you yep. have to participate in fights and bam, someone is constantly dead. Someone is constantly in the tavern because Earthshaker is running around with a shadow blade. And destroying your team one by one, that's the problem which you need to deal with. For some of singularity also, there's constant pickoffs. They know that Slug most likely is playing alone uh, all the time because that's the specifics of the hero it's slack in the end uh with the silver edge and um, bounces he's moving around the map considerably fast yet he prefers not to share his xp with anyone else oh meanwhile on the bottom oh the phaser on this fuck oh that's a winter's curse but he no he blinks right in time that was just plain luck it's luck if you get caught by the winter's curse now, that was a really good idea by the winter wyvern but unsuccessful Unfortunate, because now they went wasted Winter's Curse and have to waste a bit more for the next team fight. Yeah, it feels like it. Even though Panther are playing smart now, this bait on the top lane, this Winter's Curse on the on the creeps. Actually, Lotus up later on. Good choice on a Winter Wyvern. Yeah. Uh, question is, uh, how uh, do they plan on taking two more Rexes. So before that, we mostly see Ursa going for some kind of a desolator, yeah, to grant uh, additional um, tower uh, pushing potential uh, from for Penta, yeah. But instead, and yeah, actually here it is, Vesa in the backpack. Meanwhile, on the top lane. Yeah, duel onto the Night Stalker will ensure more damage to the Legion Commander. He'll even win it. And now with a Night Stalker, they don't have the vision they usually rely on. Uh, that means. Well, yeah, that's just screwed. <laughs> Good, uh, Penta can't really fight this. Even th though nighttime is going to come in 30 seconds, they have to wait till that happens and Nightstalker is back to be able to fight with the darkness as well. Yeah, finally, Singularity got a kill, which we, they were searching for for quite a while. 
I'm tempted to try to take a tier 2 on the top lane. They know that there is no Night Stalker for 30. Yeah, oh, but actually. they can't really commit. I mean, they, they have a really hard time initiating. They can take a, a tower to it. It's okay. But they can't really come in and try to get more objectives. Yeah. I mean, you're still in the time where Viper still has the effectivity. It's still not minute 50 or so. Your Stark still hasn't gotten as many items to become less effective. Look at the bottom. Look at the bottom. So there is a double damage Earthshaker. Nisha standing in the back of creeps. Yeah, there's no way you can get this kill onto Nisha. I don't believe this. Oh, I do believe this. Okay, onto me. Come on, on me. Prove, prove me wrong, please. There's the Echo Slam, the Enchant Totem. He does have the damage. I was wrong. <laughs> Okay, owned me, owned me, you just owned the puck. It is a mid laner, and you're an off laner. It's 36 minutes in the game, and you just solo killed him. That's ridiculous. Well, that's why people play Earth Shaker nowadays, boys. Pick Earth Shaker, and your pubs win pubs. Now, let's see, they forced off the Night Stalker forward so they can find the Exotic Deer. They won't find him in time. Unfortunately, they can still play uh, and try to get the Roshan if they're so inclined. No puck means they can take the Roshan. But the Roshan will, by the time it comes back. Oh, wow! Another solo kill by owned me. I'm just going to follow him across the map at this point. I don't know why I'm talking. I'm just going to follow on me and see what he does. Yeah, if you want to take a look at uh, any kind of a kills on the map, just follow this of Shaker. <laughs> he, he will grant you some kills later. So no, later, but there will be, definitely. Time to wait for the Roche for Pent and probably finish the game after that exotic deer. Getting silence, but there is no kind of a follow-up. Everyone too far behind from side of a Penta. That's good. Just... Too. They notice how yeah. he was creating space for the Roshan. That's that's quite clever. Cause they don't expect that because all the solo kills. But now they can go for a Roshan a bit safer. Yeah, there is no shrine also from the Singularity, yeah. so they will have to commit a lot of time. But probably um, smoke may be a good idea from side of a Penta and try to pick off someone like Slug will be pretty neat. Only me already standing in the trees. We'll see. They, they're waiting for someone, but nobody is coming. They're not showing on the lanes, so probably they thought that oh, maybe Singularity will think that we're taking Roche and will commit to that, but Singularity are scared to go there. Here comes the smoke from their side. Probably the game changing fight. Yeah, the smoke this time from Singularity, so it was the other team that smoked in this case, but this might really help them out. The Slark trying to pretend like they don't have a smoke up, and Nisha's already been revealed. Patos wants to go in with a duel. They are already leaving Roshan, and the BKB has been committed by Legion Commander. She can't find a duel just yet. They're gonna go on to the Viper. The Viper, though, has the BKB, and he will survive this. The Winter Scorch with the Legion stops the initiation, and they will find him to Exotic Deer. He has a Shadow Dance, so he should be able to survive. For now, nobody dies, as everyone is fighting the most chaotic team fight possible. It's so far off that my camera can't even catch it all. Legion Commander, though, he's been stuck. Static Storm will do nothing to save the Legion Commander, but this Ursa might just lose his life. A Fissure, though, stunning Exotic Deer in a great cold embrace, and sure that this Ursa can survive a bit longer. The Echo Slam makes this fish into a flat one, and now they're gonna go onto the poor Puck, the only surviving member. They want to cancel his Blink Dagger, use Yul Scepter to dispel that silence, and they can't really finish him off. The objective is the Roshan anyway, right? Yeah, le just leave the Puck go. I'm gonna heal Skitter, and... Look at the old me. Of He's course. <laughs> Once again, poor Lisash. <laughs> Glimpsing, but not really helping the situation. Nisha will, though, try to snatch the ages or at least destroy it or something. <laughs> but look at DNC. Nah. He is committed for the kill. Oh, hold me. Yeah, the fissure to block his escape mechanism. That's not bad, but instead he blocked himself. <laughs> the irony of it. Oh, well. In the end, they still get the Roshan. And that Roshan goes to Ursa. And Singularity still lost four people. So that ends up being super beneficial. Slark has no buyback. Legion Commander has no buyback. Um, Desolator on Ursa and Taos will go down fairly fast. Buck still got his Dream Coil though. Oh, that's a setup. Okay, I mean, they do. They could have a Dream Coil plus uh, maybe an Impale. Now the Leech Commander is finally back. The Slark only 13 more seconds. They have to wait for him. Desolator is starting to do a lot of damage to those uh, buildings. And uh, yeah, they already take the melee racks. The Winter's Curse comes in, but they can't actually, they don't have any follow-up for that. Nisha comes in with a Dream Coil and stops the Winter Wire, and that's the objective. Blazemon already used the BKB, he wants to fight this. Pato's being hit by the Viper Strike, but will do absolutely nothing. The duel might come out, Static Storm in the right time, and the Stark already joins the team fight. They timed this perfectly, as they can kill the Winter Wyvern first, and now go on to the Viper. The Cheese got eaten, but it did absolutely nothing, as Blazemon dies himself. Skinner has to run away. The Glimpse actually helping him out there. Or, sorry, no, he blinked away, never mind. The Glimpse blinked him back, and he blinked it. And then he still has the Aegis, doesn't want to lose it here, he could just die twice. They don't see him entirely, Stark. 
So trying to catch him, DNZ will be his uh, chauffeur here, ensuring that this team fight works out fine for the Ursa. And Onmi is still around, the silence on the Slark, he still has the ultimate, but no! There comes the Echo Slam, plus the help from the Earthshaker in general, using the BKB, he might have been off of my board and he could chew! The Ursa has been disarmed and he can't really fight this, he has to run away! Everyone in Penta is trying to get the kill on the Slark, but he's too much of a slippery fish, and in the end, DNZ might just be the target to die here. Urshaker himself, they're tired of this guy killing their whole team. Exotic here has to commit to this, but they have no vision, and that's Silver Edge, or Shadow Blade, will save his life because they have no vision. No vision of him. Well, wow. At least they managed to take the set of racks as they only one tower, tier, one tier 3 left for Singularity, and Aegis still up on Ursa. That's the bad news. Bad news for Singularity, and even though fight was kind of nice, it still doesn't feel like it is enough. 8k gold advantage for Penta. Though 8k gold advantage, mostly when we see Terax is down, it's like 15 or 20, but well, that's the proof why, I guess. There's uh, no BKB on Ursa, he's losing his Aegis. Yeah, it was just a simple Aegis loss. Winter's Curse for a setup. Can they finish up the Slark? Start piling up the swipes, there's the stun, the echoes, yeah, they have enough damage. Uh, Xarg, do you wait? The Shadow Dance, is he gonna TP? They have no way to stun him, and Chant on him, though! No, it's too late, they actually managed to make him out alive, and Kaysor himself will die, but who cares, there's a Slark that was the objective. Ooh, that's unfortunate. Well, they committed the Winter's Curse, yet it almost got the same uh, cooldown as the respawn of Nyx Assassin. Just need to wait for the Echo Slam. I believe, and it's just a bit of a better positioning. Nisha, meanwhile, with the Invest Rune, standing in the back lines on me. Oh no, will they try to burst him down? He's also Invest, they don't see him. Oh, oh no, yeah, Slug yeah. with a jam. Yeah, the duo's gonna find them. On me will lose his life here. No, that was a cold embrace. He might actually save him. The duo's not enough. This tank storm also not hurting him at all. As is the BKB still activated, and this Earthshaker will survive. The duo, the Legion Commander, will not have the same luck as the puck goes onto him. He's silenced, but he still wants to fight. On me, ensuring this kill onto the puck, but he just missed his Echo Slam. He got a bit too greedy there, and they couldn't finish him off. Now the update is a Slark, but in the end, Singularity will only lose one person that team fight. That being the Legion Commander. Now Penta, it's time to fight. You know they don't have a duel. You know they don't have a Slark with a Shadow. Dance actually just got it off cooldown. It should be fine for him. Skitter still attacking those towers. A lot of pushing power anyway. Exotic Deer comes in, has to fight against Skitter. The Silver Edge triggered. And Exotic Deer already used a Shadow Dance. They could punish this. Nisha goes in, has no Dream Call. They actually use the Art, the Winter's Curse onto him. He might be able to kill him. The stun is there as well, and the puck is dead. They are able to finish him off. Next Assassin now silenced and destroyed. And Penta Esports is just losing people left. Sorry, Single Air is losing people left and right. Penta destroying their towers, and they're out of. Uh, Structures to destroy. They have no more base. Singularity. How are they going to defend this? They're starting to go now onto the main structures. That being the tier fours. Penta wants to finish this now or never really, because they're committing to the kill on the Nixus Assassin as well, making sure that this buyback gets punished. In comes the Winter Wyvern, finds against the Slark, and but she's really tanky. Actually, can survive this. DNZ going onto Kaysor. They have him because they have the gem. They can see him, but the Slark will save his teammate as DNZ goes down. But the rest of their team is just going onto the throne. That's the main objective. Skitter uh, trying to attack it with his overpower. This later really helping out, but the Slark goes onto the Place one, place one is just determined to destroy this throne, and the Hurricane Pike sends him in the same place where he was before. Can they kill his at 10 HP? And they will do it at the end. The guys from Penta Esports take this final match, and they're able to make it out of this best of three and into the finals for the Pro Dota Cup EU version. Wow, that was actually a spectacular game. Wow, one of the most amazing series I actually got to cast. To be honest, yeah, that, that was, was a great games. Great games. Very, very equal teams, uh, both of them not really making that many mistakes, just making good plays, perhaps Singularity a bit out of position this game, and the targeting was not the best in all engagements, but in general, they did play pretty well using the Slark and, and Puck picks really efficiently in team fights by creating chaotic engagements for them. Good job, good job uh, Penta Esports, deserved win to the final, Singularity will still have another chance to come back as they will be facing off against another European team in the, in the lower bracket finals. That's it for today, at least for the European version of this tournament, we'll come back tomorrow uh, with some more European Dota, and for now we have the night games of course for the American teams, we'll be fighting a 19 EDT which is 11 CEST, big fan in Midas Club, that's what starts us off with the next region of the Pro Dota Cup. 
That said, guys, hope you enjoyed the cast. Hope you enjoyed the cup itself, of course, sponsored by Xpet. So go check those guys out. And if you did enjoy the games in the cast, feel free to follow us on Twitter at, at DSwordfish and at Bate Dota. The links will be put in the chat. And of course, if you didn't, feel free to tell us why you didn't. And, you know, we're here to improve and to give you the best viewing experience possible. That said, guys, the stream will be going off now. Hope you've enjoyed your games today. And we'll be coming back soon in just three hours with Big Fan against Midas Club. See you then.